Uh, Jeff Kemp's my name. Uh, I have the a great pleasure of being chairman of the board for Football Gold Coast. Could I please ask you to make welcome Dr Alex Douglas, our state member for Gavin, is a great supporter of youth on the Gold Coast. Thank you very much for coming, Dr Douglas. Also, I'd like to welcome Michelle and Dean, Dean sorry, from the AFL, and also Sarah and Ty from Gold Coast Junior Rugby League. So thank you from the other coaches for coming along tonight. Now, why are we doing this? Last year, um, some of you might know I worked at St Michael's College and last year uh, I had a fellow by the name of Paul Stanley, who I'd heard about, um, come and speak to all the year nines at St Michael's. And the presentation was so important that I asked him after, this was 12 months ago, if he would come and do the same for our young people playing football of all codes on the Gold Coast. So could I ask you to please welcome Mr. Paul Stanley. At uh, the PA hospital, after being attacked in the street last night at Alexandra Hills. He's a nice guy. He's, he's like innocent and he wouldn't do anything to hurt anyone. But he's just in the wrong time, wrong place. He'd been with up to 80 teenagers celebrating the 18th birthday of a friend at a house in Brompton Street. There were no gate crashes, it had been invitation only. Everyone knew and apparently liked each other. Talking last night and that, you see, the party was going right, so and all for this has happened, so it's pretty what sad. About 11 o'clock, possibly fueled by alcohol, celebrations turned nasty. Matt was seen to walk outside, where witnesses say he was punched, knocked to the ground and kicked. The young fellas uh, received uh, serious injuries. Those at the party have told police the violence stemmed from an earlier incident where words were exchanged over a girl. A terrible consequence of something that seemed to be nothing more than a heated argument involving Matt and a friend of the girl's boyfriend. I wasn't out of control, it was just something that happened. It's just two teenagers went. Having taken statements from witnesses, police spent the day questioning a 16-year-old boy who this afternoon was charged with grievous bodily harm. Neil Dawley, National 9 News. He'd been on a high, the blonde number 7, playing here in red in the Maroondoo Roos under-15 grand final win just two weeks ago. <coughs> Matt Stanley's teammates impressed with his already obvious skills. He was really talented. He could throw the ball to the other side of the field, uh, the goals. His sporting prowess extended to touch. Here in the dark shirt, he makes a break for Metropolitan East. Hi everybody, um, I'm Matt's dad. It was the 23rd of September back in 2006 and as we mentioned there, it was our son, younger son, Nicky's 12th birthday. And we decided that rather than have a party, we'd um, just go out to have dinner, um, the family. Um, and I'm quite sure that everybody in this room now has, has spent a family gathering where it was just so much fun, it was so cool. Everybody was smiling and laughing and, and joking and I could steal food off Matthew's plate without getting a knife jam through the back of my hand because like all teenagers, he used to guard his food just like it was the last meal he was ever gonna have. You know? And uh, we had a food fight and I won it. Great. The people in the restaurant, you know, you could see them, they were looking at us and just, they weren't sort of angry because we were carrying on like pork chops. They were just looking at us and, so, and you could just see them saying, what a great, happy family. And we were. We um, finally decided that it was about time that we, we drove Matt to uh, Dominic's place prior to him going to his party. He probably had to leave before we got thrown out. That's the sort of fun we were having. Anyway, we got to Dominic's place and Tom's <coughs> dad was going to take half a dozen of the boys to this party. It just wasn't real. It was impossible that this could be happening to our child, our brother, our friend. Eventually, one of the doctors came out and said, look, um, Matthew has very, very bad injuries. Um, we don't have the equipment or the skill or what 
to actually look after Matty the way that he's got to be looked after. We're going to have to take him to the Princess Alexandra Hospital. He said, what you guys should do is, is head off and, and go there. We'll be driving very slowly and you go there and wait and we'll come and see. There was two doctors came in. One was the head of the intensive care unit. The other was a, a neurosurgeon that they called in to, uh, and as you know, neurosurgeons look after people's brains. They took Kay and Nick and I into a side room and they got a computer and they put a disc in that should, of the, all the scans and x-rays that had been taken of Matthew. It showed that Matthew had two fractures to his skull. It showed that he had four broken ribs. It showed that he had a crushed lung. They showed in one of the x-rays a line where Matthew's brain should be in normal circumstances. Um, because as you know, inside your skull is quite a gap around your, your brain and your skull. And then they showed where Matthew's brain actually was. It showed later on in the day, Matthew's brain was swelling, was bleeding that badly and swelling that much that you could actually see Matthew's brain starting to force its way out the base of the skull. The doctor said to us, Matthew has horrendous brain injuries, they're irreversible and he's going to die. And that was it. Matthew did look much different to what he looked like up there. He had just a little graze on one side. Really the horrible injuries that he had didn't show at all. And that was another reason, I guess, it was so hard to get our heads around the fact that you know, we'd been told he was going to die. We didn't know when that was going to happen, it happened fairly soon. Gradually, Matt's friends started to come up to the hospital and, and the, the headmaster of uh, Redwoods College where Matty went said that there was over 100 kids. He was right. Somebody counted one part of it and there was over 220 kids who were there. And they were just sitting in this room waiting. Now, can you imagine what it was like for these kids to try and get their heads around the fact that Matt was going to die? And they just, the kids mainly just sat there and many of them cried. Again, as I said before, they were trying to get their heads around this horrendous thing that was happening and now had happened. They were trying to understand what it was going to be like without Matthew. Family, day after day after day, we go through that. We never see him again. We did to us. But if he's an organ donor, he'll live on with other people. And we'll be able to go and see them. That'll be cool. So, yeah, that's how we made the decision. So why Matthew was looking like he was breathing was because they were still pumping oxygen into his body to keep all the beautiful organs right to help somebody else out so we could go and see them. We went into the side room. We sat down with a couple of doctors who said cool things to us like, is there anything you'd like? Son, please. Two police officers from the uh, homicide section of the Crimson Police Service came in and they've been hovering around all day and they said to us, um, as we speak, the individual who attacked Matthew um, previously had only been charged with grievous bodily harm because all he'd done is just bash Matthew. Yeah, that was all the time, doesn't it? But now Matthew had died. This individual has been charged with, or I think that I probably think the word is the most vile in any language, and it's called murder, it's because that's what he'd done, he'd murdered Matthew. How we got home, I don't know. Um, we decided that we would do something about it. We, Maddie and I were going to go out and try and put the message out to the world that bad things do happen to good people. Um, when you go to a party, um, you go there to enjoy yourself, like Matthew. He went to the party to enjoy himself, not to die, but he did. And that's what we're trying to get across to people these days now, is that you have got to be so careful. One of the, the, the things that I got involved with with the Queensland Police Service was the One Punch Can Kill campaign. And people say that's rubbish, that can't happen. Yes, it can. The punch that Matthew received that knocked him to the ground was sufficient to cause his death. He hit his head on the concrete. And that was enough to kill him. To turn around and say that that can't happen is rubbish. It happens all the time. 
You could ask the parents of a young man called Thomas Kelly, who was walking through King's Cross nearly three weeks ago, walking along holding the the hand of a young lady he'd met four weeks before, his new girlfriend. He was talking on his telephone, and an individual walked past him and punched him. He fell to the ground, his mum and dad turned the life support system off two days later. Life doesn't have a reset button. Get in your head. You can't feel a reset button there. You don't have one. Matthew didn't have one. So turning around and saying, I'm sorry, doesn't cut it. You cannot change something that has happened. Nothing will bring Matthew back. Nothing will give Nathan back his life. No matter how many times somebody says sorry. Just if you take nothing away from this evening, take that away from me. Sorry doesn't cut it. Life, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't have a reset button. I know Matthew was up there looking down. Thanking you all for spending the time of coming along here. Um, and he hopes he doesn't see you for a long, long time. Thank you. So um, it's a very, very powerful message, isn't it? I think on the upside of things is that um, life's about living, living to the full. And we all love sport in this room. Uh, you rep players, a lot of you, which means that you really are committed. And sport is a wonderful thing to be in. Play to the rules and play to win, but don't go over the rules. And violence is not in the rules. I met a gentleman the other day who was quite a bizarre person to be involved with an anti-violence thing, a gentleman by the name of Danny Green, who I believe right at this very moment is fighting over in Perth in a uh, world championship fight. He is so anti-street violence that you can't believe it. But he is a role model. Now Hunter is a great role model, and all you people in here, I'm sure you're all good role models. <laughs> Why do I think that? Because you're here. Thank you. Folks, um, that's it for tonight. Um, as I said, uh, it's a very powerful message. We will have highlights of this on our website. I would be very, very grateful if you would tomorrow at school or when you're back at your clubs. Ask your mates or tell your mates to check it out on the website. It is really important. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, parents, for your uh, commitment to your kids. It's, uh, it's terrific. A uh, couple more things if I could. Just want to acknowledge and thank Chris Waglin from the Department of Sport and Rec, wherever Chris is. Uh, that's not Chris, but that's where Chris was. There he is there. Uh, thanks for coming tonight, Chris. Also, we have a, a, another presentation to, to Dr. Douglas for his support in coming tonight. Thank you, Dr. Douglas. Thank you very much. Safe trip home, folks, and enjoy your footy. Thank you.